So we started with stay focused, right? And what we start, why did we say stay focused? Because I think I believed in the beginning that it was just going to be an encouragement for where we're going to. Because once God starts doing something new in your life, it's very easy, Pastor Clayton, to, for, to, to, for, to forget to focus on God. And to be so excited by what's happening that you miss what God is saying in the time. When I said stay focused, it's not stay religious or be religious. It is when you're at that place in your life to stay focused on what God is saying, His patterns, and to build according to what God wants you to do. Once you miss that, you can miss everything else and still be in the new job, in the new house, the new car, the new business, and you have missed God by a mile. Staying focused on God is the thing. If God has brought you to it, His purpose is for you to stay in it and not miss a step of God. Can you imagine being wealthy when you've prayed for wealth, Kaylin, and the wealth has come, and now that the wealth is there, that you realize that I'm in this thing that I've prayed for, but not with the God who gave it to me. Because we pray for things that will not speak for us when we stand before the throne of God. Do you think that you still have 50 years to love? Think again. And above all of us in the spirit is a time clock. It is like that, the hourglass, that your time is running out. Don't serve God like you know when God told you this is when you're going to die so the day before you can just make right. Because it's not just about making right, it's about giving answers when you get there. Jared, did you love the life that I gave to you? And that's why God says you will drive out demons, you will say things in my name, and still I will say go away, I did not know you. Why? Because what makes you get identity to God is you following the will of God. It is the will of God that will determine whether or not you step into His kingdom benefits whilst this side on the grave. Your will be done. On earth, as it is, on earth as it is where in heaven, your kingdom come. So we cannot say we kingdom believers and do our own will. Once you do your own will, you're serving your own kingdom. So when God took them out, he took them out with one primary purpose. Why? To worship him. He said, set my people free so that they can what? Worship me in the wilderness. Not so they can jabula and have fun and say, who wants us free? Khalad? No, you were set free for a purpose. And if God cannot find praise in you, what was the point? Because we are made to worship God. Everything in your being is to worship. There's no place in your life where you're not worshiping anything, David. At any given time in your life, you are worshiping something or someone. You don't have to be a Satanist to be a non-God believing worshiper. You can worship your marriage, your finance, all these things that you put in front of God becomes your God. And you shall have no false gods before me. And we thought God was speaking of Allah, of Baal, of all these Hindu. No, he was speaking of anything we lift up higher than him. My career. Being at home and serve God faithfully. And Father, open the door, open the door. When God opens the door for your business, you're never in church anymore. Because Sundays I'm tired. Saturdays is for shopping. And for cleaning my beautiful house that God has blessed me with. Oh Lord, it's for assignments because you've given me a buzzer. There's nothing wrong with doing these things. But once they take the place of God, what's the use of having the blessing? And many people have missed God. They think because I'm not smoking, drinking, grooving anymore, I'm not. You are away from God the moment you have no desire to be in His presence. Don't tell me, no, I've not backslidden because I'm not drinking. Drinking is not the only. Drinking is the last sign that you've backslidden. You can be in the house of God and still be backslidden. So God set them free and all these mixed multitudes went with them. They went because of vibes, of emotion. Oh, it's lekker. I see the gates are open. We can all leave. But they didn't leave with serving God in mind. They left with, we just want to be free from a past life. And that is what many of us do. Father, set me free. And when we set free, we never connect with Him with our hearts and our spirit. So when God comes and seeks for you, He doesn't find you the place He expects. And that's why the mixed multitude could easily kill and come to them with desires and intense craving and say, No man, Choma, I lust for this, I lust for that. And it was so easy to give up that. And then when God comes, He did not find them where they're supposed to be. And at the last place of them being tempted by mixed multitudes, God find them making with their hands a God unto them. A golden calf that cannot speak, that cannot hear, that cannot provide water. And all this other time God has provided for them. And the same God that speaks to them, that showed them things. He gave them manna, He gave them water from a rock. And all these things, and they gave it up for a deaf, mute God that looks nice, but has no power. A God that when He falls, you must pick Him up and put Him back in place. When He breaks, you must put super glue on His ears to touch Him back together. For a God that sat in heaven and... He opened eternity for you and He took you out of drugs and all those things. Not because you are beautiful or the pastor preached well, but because He chose you before the foundations of the earth. 
When you were still sitting there with your friends and what, because he chose you, he knew you. And he says, watch Megan. He gives angels assignments because of the purpose of God. Watch Geraldine in a depression that she don't get. That they don't take her life. Watch Sharon when she was laying on the bed with the ectopic pregnancy, almost dead. She was dead for over 15 minutes, technically dead. No blood in my wife's body. And the angels were at the bedside. Because the nurse was just waiting to write the death report. Ask her. No blood. Not even a cup of blood in her body left. She was cold. She was, she was bleak. There was nothing. Uh, because God shows her before the foundations of the earth. The angels watch over her. And the next day when the nurse came, that, that left her and she just prayed and said, Father, I pray that you save her soul when she dies tonight. The vital states, everything was done, was gone. And the angels watched. And Satan is the demons on the other side of the bed. Here for ons, that ons in us. And the angel said, there is mal. Heaven said we should watch. And the next day, miraculously, she just started getting blood. Everything started pumping again. And the nurse came the next day. She cried. She says, how are you still alive? How? I've been in this profession. I've seen people with better options, better... Guys. And then imagine God saves her from that and she wants to live her life the own way. The devil is a liar. Stop wanting to say, God, when you bless me with this, I will serve you better. Say, Father, you've watched over me. I don't even know how I have food every night because on that nuts me, but you provide for me. Stay focused. Stay focused. Amen. Amen. In the next week, we discuss that many moved with God, with the cloud by day and the fire pillar by night, but God did not move in them. Because if God moves in you, Pastor Vic, no matter what happens on the outside, you will resist it, not with carnality or your own reasoning. The Holy Spirit will keep you. That is God moving in you. And I'm not encouraging a, a, a group of believers when they, when they don't have. That let's say, yes, fine, as long as God is in me. It's God's purpose and plan for you to prosper. We can all now and then be a bit broke, a couple of days, a couple of months. Poverty means you got it from your father, you have it, you're going to give it to your children. It's a demonic state of being. That is what poverty is. There's nothing beautiful about poverty. I know it. It affects your mind. You question God. There's always something like you when, you, when, 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 when there's poverty. They give you a prophecy that you're going to travel the world, you're going to speak the word of God, and all you think is, my father's going in suit. Poverty, it's a liar. Because there's a spirit that's telling you every single day, you are worthless, you are worthless, you are useless. He come iemand alle like you. Oh, I cannot date this person. How will I take them to the movies? You can an. It's like you only focus on your leg. Does it make sense? Skelle gila. Okay. Gila leg soos mensa geskelde mensa. I'm just going to read this quickly and then we're going to today's um, main teaching. Numbers 11 verse 4 to 6. We don't have to go there. It says, Now the mixed multitude were among them yielded to intense craving. Watch your company. They were fine waiting on God every day for manna, for coils. And then the mixed multitude with no, with no covenant with God. It was so easy to give up and they came and said, Hey man, not knowing that God is giving them a revelation of who Jesus was. I am the bread of life. He is the bread of heaven. So when manna came, God wanted to give them an early taste of a future Christ. And the Chomis just wanted something that tastes nice here. And he swee brand is saw. Oh, the devil gave me swee brand. Nies here, how up spicy kos eat. Here. Drink. It's like drinking a liter of coke before you sleep. Now you're getting... Oh, pastor, last night when I went to sleep, the devil had taken me near. How up? <laughs> Disconnected people are prone to check what they said to Moses. They said, now when the people saw, can someone just help with the back? Can we please try and control the kids, please? Now when the people saw that Moses delayed from coming down the mountain, the people gathered to Aaron and said to him, come make us gods worthy. Come make us God. Now, put this in your own words. When Tommy saw that God delayed in giving them their own building to own, he resorted to bringing in people that will bring in numbers. When Pastor Vicky saw that God took long to answer him, he went to a Sangoma 
to fix things. It's the same because sometimes we judge these people in retrospect and we're doing the very same thing when we think that God takes too long. I will always give you this teaching that when it seems God is taking long, ask yourself, why am I taking so long to be processed? God will never look at you, Sister Geraldine, and see you suffer and not do anything. Hagar and Ishmael were not part of the plan of God, but when Hagar cried unto God, the kind is hunger, we are dying, and God heard. God is not unfair. We don't serve a monster. He will provide for you, but it is not the plan that He wants for you. Until you have been processed to that point, it will not come to pass. You can narak for me, for the church, you can give up everything. Until you are ready, God will not bring it. So when it says that when the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it. It's not just the time is right. It's when you are processed. And then it will seem like a suddenness. This testimony, and after God has processed my wife, the CEO came to my house and he said there, I shared this testimony with you guys. This guy doesn't move with ordinary people. Team. This guy, he, he said one day, Oh, you don't sound like a man so me. Take full of my face. This guy said, Oh yeah, by the way, but he, like casual. If, if you didn't know who he was, you'll just think it's someone that has a good job. Came with the tracks with nice, we sat um, and we spoke. And this guy made a statement. He said, hey, hey, yeah, this past weekend I was sitting with Andile. Uh, we just had a nice discussion and we were talking about going to like just eat a few balls. It sounds ordinary. Until you find out it was Andile Ramaposa. Someone that moves in that circle comes to your house. But God had to process you first. If she was impatient and made her own gods, she would have met any other ordinary. Do you get what I'm saying? Cyrus comes when you are ready. So the problem is not Cyrus. The problem is you. And it sounds like tough teachings. But if I, don't, if I tell you that, if you jump three times and shout Jesus and I prophesy, uh, it feels like your number starts with zero. Oh, go deeper, Papa. Near man. All numbers become with zero. Now we sell our houses to bring to the man of God. No, guys, don't be deceived. Show me your stability in the word of God. The ability to sit under the word of God when all you want to do is hang yourself. To say, Father, it is tough, but I will trust you. That's when God says, this is a, in a Daniel that I can trust. Daniel said, if you kill me, kill me, but I will not change my confession. This God that I serve is the one who made the heavens and the earth. And they threw him in the lion. And you know who saved him in the lions then? The same God whose testimony you held, whose confession he said, I will speak of the Lord in season, out of season. They ran to Nebuchadnezzar and said, there's a fourth one with them in the fire. And he looks like the son of God. Because they didn't change who they belong to. If you have a golden calf, trust me, when the fire of persecution comes, that golden calf can summon with wakker word. Do you get what I'm saying? The God you serve is the one that will save you in times of trouble. Come and sell it blood weg. So the focus here is being in God, not in church. Thank you for coming to church, but be in God. How do you get in God? It's not by the laying in on, on events. It's just you building a relationship with God. At home, study. Go and study the verses again. Study the scriptures. Am I teaching you right? Go and study the word, Jared. Don't just take what I say here because you like my English. Oh no, he must be speaking. The, the, there's fathers of the faith. They are changing their testimonies now. Not because they were wrong the whole time, because things are pressing them. Now they are bringing new teachings of the type. No, the word doesn't lie. Do you get what I'm saying? But now because of the eloquence and the stages, we also run. No, study the word. So when I come with a, a, a teaching that's deceptive, you will say, no, but that is not what the word of God says. I think there was something wrong. I think Moses broke the ark because the ark, oh, the ark, Moses. No, 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 no. You can say after you've made that noise, pastor, Noah still built the ark. Study the word. I'll meet me WhatsApp and say, Pastor, I think, I don't understand this. What is this? Please explain. I will do it. John 15, verse 4. I it up, I it up. I now a month. I said, after a month, I'll come down. This was hard work. I need to enjoy it for a while. John 15, verse 4. Do we have it? This is Jesus. He says, abide in me and I in you. What does Jesus say? Abide in me. What is abide? Not visit. It is stay. 
It is make your place with me. God inhabits, abides with the praises of his people, not visit. That's why we can't expect God to be in our praises at church, but not at our houses. That's why even when you don't have the power emotionally to worship God, put on some, some music that will still rise and you will see your spirit quicken and long before you'll join in worship and your worship will be ignited. Because it stays. And have you seen the longer you worship at home, the better you feel. It's not psychoanalysis. It's just simply the presence of God coming to abide with you. And when he comes, he comes with everything you need to be delivered from that spirit of heaviness. Jesus said, abide in me as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides, stays, is connected to the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Fruitfulness does not come to someone that's disconnected. We want the benefits of fruitfulness without the commitment of abiding. It doesn't work like that. It is like someone that wants the benefits of marriage without the commitment of marriage. How do they end up? They end up more empty because it is not the design of God. He says when you want fruitfulness, it's fine. It can be given. But the unless this speaks of a what? An embargo, a legal contract. Unless speaks of something must be done first before they found the results. Unless you study, there's some jobs you cannot get. Unless you know whether how much favor you have, there's just some doors that won't open until you do certain things. Does it make sense? It says, unless this is the prerequisite for fruitfulness. Now, we pray for fruitfulness, but when we look at our lives, we're not committed to God. It's so easy to jump into the presence of God and then back into the world like this. It's like chameleons. There's nothing that says, no, man, oh, yeah, we can up. Make a choice. If you want to stay in the world and groove, make it. But if you, you cannot do that because it's in the midst of the jumping where Satan sometimes catches people. He says, stay in me. That is the prerequisite for fruitfulness. What does fruitfulness? It speaks of life. If you see a tree laying there that is cut off from the roots, do you expect fruit? Even if you love peaches, let me say peaches. You get home and there's a peach tree of yours that's been hit by lightning. Or the children played on it and it fell. So now you can see it's drying up because it's not connected to the roots, right? So the first signs are death. Right? You love peaches. Check this. Now spring and summer comes, Tino, and one day you open up and you've not removed that tree and all of a sudden you see peaches. What will be your first response? As much as you love peaches, you will say, there's this witchcraft. He's toward iemand that me... Greg het iemand gestiri. Because it's planted in us to understand connectedness. It is like someone that you've never seen a business, they don't work, there's no income, and all of a sudden these guys are just buying stuff. What's your first thing? It's corruption. Unless he had lotto gespeel and gefang. How does fruitfulness just appear without, con uh, without connectedness? It is when we say, come and pray on Wednesday and you feel, no, I'm going to watch it Oster. It's fine, watch it Oster. Watch it. But when you want fruitfulness, gaan vraag daar die anker. Wat is hij naam? Is it anchor, no? I was killing for Kegel in the TV. Go and go and ask. Om Aibi. Me Muna. Groot amaf. Inshallah. Frala. I don't know if you can say Kegel TV. Sometimes just to relax, I watch a program or two. As the Kerk means, oh, watch it, Pastor. Oh, it's watch it. And see that up. You just see on Facebook. Oh, the series is so deep. Half past one. Once but, yes, of series. After that, half past two, he come a WhatsApp dear. I get it when I wake up at six or five. Who oh, pastor the devil is in the house? It's not the devil. It's those stranger things you're watching. You're opening doors. Let's get, let's get to the word of God. Ephesians 1, 3 and 4. We're almost done. Ephesians 1, 3 and 4. Check this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing, where? Where is the... Exactly. Not just heavenly places. Because sometimes we read there and we stop. Yes, bless us in all. We must get to heavenly places. No, in Christ. Because there are three heavens. Remember the, the teaching that I started when we just started? The heavens. There's three heavens. There's the first heaven is where we live. The second one is where Satan has been thrown out. Don't worry, one day I'll give a teaching. That is the second heaven. It is the atmosphere, the spiritual atmosphere. And the third heaven is where God said. So heavenly places does not always speak of a good place spiritually. So you cannot just say heavenly places. Where in heavenly places? Because there's princes, there's powers, there's rulers in heavenly places. So it says, blessed be who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Where? 
in heavenly places in Christ. So sometimes we want to ascend to heavenly places outside of Christ and want to inherit the, the, the heavenly blessings. No, it doesn't work like that. Spiritual blessings are in Christ and those that are connected, they are connected to those blessings because of being in Christ. Does it make sense? First heaven, where we live. Then here is where the spiritual battles mostly are, the atmosphere. Second heaven, right? Then is the third heaven where God sits. Right? Satan rules. That's why they call him the prince of the power of the air. That's why Satan, when there's no spiritual activity over a place, when the churches become more event focused and not prayer focused and, and intercessory focused, you'll see the places, the natural places, become worse. Why? Because the church is sleeping and then something else has taken over the atmosphere. And we see the manifestation in it with violence, with drugs, with all these other things. And there's just economic shrinkage over a place. So when you see that, you must ask, what is the strength of any church? The strength of any church is ju not ju judged by numbers. It is by the spiritual authority. Because I've, behold, I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. Right? So when we say heavenly places of sabbatical, it is not just being heavenly and speaking in tongues. Are you in Christ? Abide in me as I abide in you. You cannot be fruitful unless you are connected to the vine. Who's the vine? Christ said, I'm the vine. You are the branches. So Christ said, I will do the work. I will root myself. I will bring stability, but the fruit will be seen on you. He says, even though the power is mine, the stability comes from me. All you have to do is be connected and people will, they will, they will be so happy for you, but I am the one with the power. So now that we understand fruitfulness, it's the same as the spiritual blessings. He says, blessed be the God of Father who has blessed us, past tense. And why don't many of us get these things that's already there? Because we're in heavenly places sometimes, but not in Christ. It's the impatience that make us run to people that can work in the atmosphere. Heavenly places, not in Christ. And they bless you with rotten fruit. You think it's that and you just wonder why are things not working out? You were put in heavenly places. Not in Christ. Next verse. We're going somewhere. Just as He chose us where? In Him. Guys, does it make sense to you? Just as He has chose us in Him before the... How can God choose something that's not born yet? Because we're not from this planet. You did not start in your mother's womb, Tino. You, know. you started way before. That's why God could have grace with me when I was busy with my nonsense. He chose me. When you gave, went to the tent and you cried and said, no, it's a crusade. You didn't choose him that night. It was manifestation or opening up of his plan. He chose you long ago. He chose you. The guys that didn't choose you and use you, God don't care. He chose you. He validates you. That's why dust of yourself. Father, I've been, I've been used. People in Tukis or people in Elders, wherever I come from, they look at me and they say, yeah, this one is useless, he's dirty, she's filthy. He's chosen you. He has chosen you. Before the foundations of the earth. In Him. Not just... God and Satan was not, and, and Satan is not his equal. They were not choosing like we used to play games. Nowadays, they don't play it anymore. We all stand together and it's like, I choose him, I choose her, I choose him, I choose her. And they, they start from the best. So, as, as it goes, they won't tell you to your face you're useless. As it goes. And you're not getting chosen, you're like, yeah, Marcus, useless, he. I chose him, I chose him, I chose him. And at the end, when there's, when there's an uneven number, the one that couldn't be chosen, Yezi Oli. Because you are so useless, you're not a threat in any team. Like, no, you don't have to field. You, you, you can't field, you can't earn And you're always useless. Yes, the eight, and don't you let all sister Betty. Who's going to know have any places you'll forget any all in I was never the all in I was good. Ask, I saw my friend Lele's here. Ask him. After church, ask him. We used to play soccer. Ask him. You didn't call it Shibaba, you called it Kitchen. Uh, Ask Pastor Vic, man, you used to see us play, no? Nah? Hmm? <laughs> and you used to admire the skills, no? Nah? <laughs> <laughs> he chose us in him. And this is not what I wanted to speak on, but he chose you. 
No matter who didn't choose you, he chose you. Lift up your heads. Lord's die fun, just giving up. People came, they didn't see your worth. They used you, it's fine. Whether it's business, whether it's romance, whatever it is, he chose you. What is choosing? It is a conscious decision to place favor on you, to work with me. Out of many CVs, out of many people that were connected to this guy, he chose my wife. Why? Because before the found, he didn't choose her. He's a vessel to bring in God's plan. Guys, come on. He, he chose you. Amen. What is foundation? Before we put up this stage, it was empty. We needed to create a foundation because we couldn't dig. So when you remove the concrete, the slip on top, there is rubble, there is fault. We made a foundation. It took two days traveling with the stuff in. Ask Pastor Brian, it, when we put it on, that is when God came and put on the foundation with wisdom. Remember Proverbs 8. Even before God said in the beginning, even before Genesis 1, because that is when the foundation, He chose you. That's why the Bible says every hair on your head is numbered. You are not just a mistake. Yeah, pastor, but I'm a, the product of, of, of a one night stand. I was a product of an abuse. What? He chose you. He chose the womb you're getting into. He chose... And he placed a covering over it, over you. That's why when you were sick, when you were small, God didn't panic. When you were a baby on an incubator, God didn't panic, David. Chose you. Can I say something sensitive to you? There's some platforms that you would never have reached unless God allowed you to be born the way that you are. And now people are not inviting you because of pity. They invite you because of the wisdom and the favor of God in your life. He chose you. There's no mistake to your life. He chose you. You would have just been another ordinary brother. Now you speak at schools. There's pastors that go to places that you go to. Why? He chose you. Because even when people look at you, I shame, I shame. When you open your mouth, it's like, wow. Whoa. Because there's fingers on your tongue. He chose you. In the year 2005, I was probably clinically dead for, for, for 20 minutes, 25 minutes. My aunt came, she's a nurse, she took my vital states. At work that whole day, it was a Friday, I just felt numb. I couldn't feel anything. I was at work, I was just extraordinarily tired. I went home, told my granny, don't dish up for me. Um, put it in, I'm just tired, I want to sleep. But at Greg's, I was woken up by people, it was like I was in a stadium. And people were shouting my name from afar. My granny was standing at, with my aunt. And they were calling me. All I knew when I dreamt, I was walking towards a great light. But something was just... And my aunt said, you were gone. You were not breathing. Yes, Sister Betty. You were not breathing. There was nothing. There was no pulse. There was nothing. And my granny went to change into um, a dress that to receive people. Because in her mind, the people will come. And I need to receive them. They accepted I was dead. He chose me. He chose you. We get stuck at mistakes. He chose you. Just say, Father, forgive me and help me to forgive myself. Even if you committed a murder, whether it's abortion or you killed someone or you stole, from this point on, Father, forgive me. Move on. He chose you. If there's one thing the enemy don't want you to know is that God has chosen you. Almost least on. That is why stay focused is more than just look at God. Look at that because you can become religious and miss him. The Bible says when Jesus came into the temple, there was a man with an unclean spirit. And what opened it up? It was not laying on a van, speaking in tongues. It was the teaching of the word. And when the word in, came in power, because the word is God, that man was delivered. Or exposed, rather. So staying focused is not just, who works Hila, who? No, no, no. It is when you can't even call his name. Yet, I will, my praise will be continuously on your lips. I just lost my father with tears in my eyes. He's not still the cell of Jesus. He chose you. Before the foundation of the earth, so that you be holy and without blame before him in love. Let's go deeper. Ephesians 2 verses 4 and 6. Does it make sense? Remember I said not all heavenly places, as in verse 3 of chapter 1, is good places. I will show you. Ephesians 2 verses 4 and 6. It says... But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love which he loved us. This great in mercy is that whatever you've done, if God has chosen you, there's no way he will, he, will, he, will, he will cancel you. All he wants is for you to come back. He does not condone the nonsense we do. So don't get me wrong. 
Because sometimes people preach grace as license om net nonsense to maak. Oh, all I need to do is just confess Christ. Nee, dan gaan tegen kom, you want to confess Christ, but you're so deep in the jungles of Satan, that he can kill you. So, so. Right. Because of his great love, when you were dead in trespasses, when our sin, when you are sinning, spiritually you are dead. He is dood, spiritually. He is dood. That's why God, when, when Adam sinned, God asked him, Adam, where are you? Why? Because spiritually the disconnect was instant. When you sin, how do you feel? You feel guilty. Why? It's instant. I am divine. You are the branch. You cannot bear fruit unless you're in me. No seki branch. I give him to sin. Cut off. Instant. You're still living. You're still existing. You're still with your friends. You're still laying on your bed. Whatever it is, physically you're there. Spiritually cut off. We are dead. In a, once we continue in our sin, we are dead. Because we worship God with our spirit. The spirit man dies. Our, our soul is still alive. What is the soul? It's the place of your will. Your desires. Your passion. Your fantasies. So now we worship God with emotions. Why? Because music is emotive. What is emotive? It's something that riles up your emotions. So now they play here. This is the house of God. And you say, oh Lord, this do it. Because worship is a spirit thing. We can give God soulish worship and the spirit is not connected. I will show it. Who made us alive together. What is the alive? When you come to Christ, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Here's my spirit. Re-energize re it. And then you become alive in the spirit. That's why many of us, when we made that confession, wherever it was, you feel like you just, you feel like lacquer. Why? Because your spirit man is connected with his creator. Mark it, son. Right. Let's go verse. Alive together with Christ. Right. Next verse. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. Where? Come on. Where? That's why someone, there's a friend of mine, she is a traditional dealer. Slash Angoma. She believes we are the same. I said, no, you might also be in heavenly places, but you're not seated in Christ. Does it make sense now? Because sometimes she would tell me, I had a dream of a ligne, you died, dream was dear my car, because I'm under the blood. Especially when it's not in line with God's purpose for my life. Don't just take anything that looks like a prophecy. Because if the Holy Spirit is not in you, it will, it, anything will look like truth. And I can tell her, no, I don't believe that, but thank you for sharing. Even if she's my friend and she gets angry, because once I accept that word, there's a spiritual reality I'm agreeing with and it comes into my life. Nira oom werk met water en met kersa. Yes! He can even tell you stuff about your life because of a familiar spirit. What is a familiar spirit? It's familiar with your life. So it reveals certain things. It cannot reveal the plan of God, but it will reveal stuff like, um, Louisa, there's someone in your family that, 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 oh, die man is van hier, nee, sy van hier, Rafi. Because when you check his source, that one of the first things you can see, if someone is with God, their desire for the word and also their ability to open it up. Does it make sense? He says we are seated. He made us alive first. No, many people don't want to be spiritually alive except Christ, but they want to sit in heavenly places. Let me make an example. Brother Greg's coming quickly. Brother Vicky coming quickly. In this illustration, I'm God again. So nice of me, Pastor, to visit Kiss Vizi. It's not an illustration. Don't go and say I. This is Greg. He's in sin. Right? Sit so we we still have leave. Just an example. Just sit quickly. He is in sin, dead to his trespasses on earth. This is Brother Vicky. He's in heavenly places, but he's busy with occultism. Right? He's in heavenly places. This is heaven. Christ is seated at the right, at the right end next to the Father. Right? So he can claim to be in heavenly places, but he's not in Christ. Then Ursula comes. She accepts Christ and she has a relationship with Come. Who done? Come, 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 you know, I can't. Muni, 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 Vicky, so bad fat. And it's not up a sword, Mato. Now she comes and she becomes my child. Check this. She doesn't become a member. She doesn't become a servant of the man of God. She becomes someone that has a relationship with God. Come here, come here. Come here, come Now, Now, let's say this is the right hand of God. Mononi Mark excel like Jesus as female. It's just for illustration. 
plies, nee, oe, mens het al kerke gelos van, hulle sê wat hy kerk Jesus, nee, nee, moet nie, jy moet het recht luister, hoe sê hulle, speak once, listen twice, and listen properly, nee, ons het al presidente gehad, my vader, check, this is, this is, the right end of God, right, nou, brother, Greg confesses his sins, and he makes right with God, nou, net for illustration, go and raise him up, let's say she's an angel, or oh, the Holy Spirit, she raises him up spiritually, for God who had raised us up together. Kom, wat a man. <laughs> and made us, made us what? Sit together. As a astuli so. This chair represents reservation. It represents intent. It does not mean yes by the way so. It is, we have chosen you and your seat is waiting. And made us sit together. In the heavenly places in Christ. He's also in heavenly places, spiritual places, high places. Not in Christ. Because he's made a golden calf. And he's worshipping something else. He's not in God. But it seems like he's in, he's in heavenly places. He's not in Christ. So focus speaks then of that you are not the one who sincerely do all the effort because there's no effort. It's a conscious decision for God then through His Spirit to keep you focused. Because focus means stable and positioned where I should be. Once it comes from you, it is a religious exercise with no spiritual meaning. Focus say, Father, carry me. Holy Spirit, come in me. The Holy Spirit keeps you focused. Yes. Not your efforts. He raised us up to sit together where in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. When you are like Brother Vicky, you're moving together. He's not your mixed multitude. And whenever anybody comes because of your impatience, because the Holy Spirit is not in you, what is patience? It's a fruit of what? The Spirit. If you don't have patience, don't lie and say you have the Holy Spirit. So now, his impatience, was I Moses, he fought long, let's make our own gods, that's it. God is taking so long to answer me, that's it. But now that the Holy Spirit is come in him, there's a quickening of the Spirit, and you bring him, come, bring him, from just heavenly places, to being in Christ. That's why some people, when they've gone through hell, and you can't understand how they're standing, they are not focused by their own effort. They wanted to maybe give up, but the Holy Spirit is like, stay. Amen. Focus. Focus is not watching one thing for a long time. Focus is having the mind of Christ. People were saying about Jesus, he's sitting with drinkers, he's sitting with prostitutes, he's lying, he's a blasphemer. What kept him focused? This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. It is God keeping him in Garden of Gethsemane when he almost gave up. It was the spirit and power of God in him. Nevertheless, not my will, your will. Focus on heavenly assignment. If you're not here, anything will move you. I know what it is to go and pray for someone to get healed instantly and come home and, and can't sleep because you're in pain. I know what it is. I can say here in my fat one. Yes, I've been places where I can sense it in my flesh. And the Spirit says, He's still the same God. Focus, you see the way in Him. Let me shock you. Stay here. Ephesians 6, verse 12. Remember again, heaven, all heavenly places is not godly. Right. All heavenly places is not godly. We must define. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Against? Against? Of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts in, in week of wickedness. Where? For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Common church. Against? Principalities. Against? Against? Who is the rulers of darkness? It is demonic entities that followed Satan out of heaven. They in heavenly places in the second heaven, but they are not in Christ. That's why when Jesus came with a man who was demon possessed, on earth he was where? Walking. In the spirit he was in heavenly places because of the legion of demons that were in him. We wrestle not against them. When Jesus came, he dealt with them because he was higher than them in ranking. 
So he told them, go out and go into those peaks and they had to obey. Why? They were in heavenly places but not of the same ranking. We don't wrestle against all this, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Don't let this fool you because you see heaven and you think it's holy. That's why people come into churches and they claim to be of heavenly places. Yes, they're right. But which heavenly places? What spirits is driving them? And the only way that you will know them is not by the shoes. Because they can act like the most decent. If you cannot discern in the spirit, you'll put people behind your pulpits that are busy with nonsense. Because the demons also sit in heavenly places. But they're not seated in Christ. How do you stay focused? Build a relationship with God. When there's prayer, come. When there's Bible teaching, come. Build your, build your spirit, man. Build your spirit, man. And before long, you'll start really experiencing the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And that makes you sit in heavenly places. We were dead to our trespasses. We were. Past tense. Right? It's the same as what? We are blessed in heaven. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So to stay focused, you need to be well, seated in heavenly places. And once you get this, you'll understand also the place we pray for. Because people that are praying from that position, emotional, or busy with snacks, or even there, lowly, not even here, they pray based on their situation. But if you hear, even if you don't have a car, even if you're struggling, but when you hear, you pray from a position of authority. In the name of Jesus, leave my child. Fever, I call you to dry up right now in the name of, and the fever will obey you. Why? You are speaking from here. Not from a situation. People that are emotional and, and that's all, they pray from a position of yeah. Father, but when are you going to answer me? Father, my child is on drugs. Father, look at Tukis. But when you're from here, you're like, in the name of Jesus, you spiritual, you powers, you rulers of darkness, I don't care. I speak to you by the authority of Jesus the Christ. Be removed. And watch the gates open. Thank you. And this is all. Not all heavenly places are good or godly places. You don't stay focused on your own. What, what is your effort, if I can call it that, is your intention and your decision that, Father, I'm going to love for you. Come into me. Take over. Like that song, Eagle's Wings. Come love in me. All my life, take over. The Holy Spirit make you sit here. The blood of Jesus says, when Satan wants to come and say, I'm only Greg, Greg. Leles. Ah, don't tell me. Ah, Vicky. Vicky. Can you say, Pastor Vicky? The devil is my nyatsa. Ah, Vicky. I mark even your name. He even changes. Vicky. Yeah, I'm going to say, Vicky. Vicky, Vicky. Ay. I'm going to say, Tino. Tino, what two bottles are under? Tino. And now we try to fight reputations and we descend to that same level. Let me separate from you. I'm seated here. When you're seated here, there's no time for pettiness. When you're seated here, even if someone sits on your chair here, you fight more for that chair. Edia Stuli. Because people that are seated here are not easily influenced by those things. I've been serving here for so long. When are they making me leader? Hey, God, you have to learn us. Do you have... Yes, this is quad. No. Here, what are you making in leadership? When we say on Saturday, come clean, you were not here. Do you get what I'm saying? So when you're seated here, there's a lot of things that you're just above. Hey, Choma, I heard they said this about you. Is it? God bless them. Because I may have done it. I'm not there anymore. Spiritually, God has lifted me. Not because of anything else. But because of his mercy, Amen. his grace. Amen. Many of us don't deserve it, but because of his grace. I may have stolen, I may have committed this, I may, but because of his grace. And then I tell you also, don't play with this game in the world outside, in the world outside. Satan has legal right to dark areas. Against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts in wicked places in it, they have legal right to every dark area of your life. What is dark area? The absence of the presence of God. If you play where they play, they, they have legal right to kill, steal, and destroy. If I make a conscious decision all the time to go and play where I know I shouldn't, God is not going to stop you. Does it make sense? 
So please, I beseech you, I beg you, make your life right with God. Not, not so much. And, and when you see the deer, don't easily give in to temptations because you're more than just giving in to a, a temptation. You're literally doing this, getting up from heavenly places and stepping down. You're demoting yourself. That's what happened in the spirit. That's why you can come back to church and it will not feel the same. Why? Because you have made a decision to leave. There's no demon strong enough to walk in the presence of God and take you out. They stand there and they call you. Greg! In the spirit. And if you're not dealt with you, Greg! And then Greg's response. Are we seeing you festive? Hey, Master Kendrick is with This is not people. This is your desires. Are we seeing you festive? Hey, sh- I'll see back as I'm not here. I'm still with God. Awe, see you in November. Ah, Greg, fear. He had come. Or what? Let me for lost, ne? Tear in blood. Vanilla. And the demons all. And darum. Wag ons for festive. And to the savannas opgemaak word. To le. It sounds, it sounds very funny. That is the struggle that many of us went through and some are going through. Because you've not completely given in. And because there's no time in eternity, the spiritual realm, they can wait for you. They don't say no face of his father's get. They know their own. They, <laughs> they know their own. And they will come calling. By the grace of God, when they call you, I hope they find that the number that you've called does not exist. It is only then that you know you're fully delivered. And this is not said in condemnation, but if I don't give you the word like this, you'll struggle. And tell God, Father, I'm struggling. I really must groove. I'm not going to lie, Father. Saturdays, I was so used to it. I'm struggling. I'm struggling, Father, with that affair. I'm struggling with it. I'm struggling. It's calling my name. But here am I. Take out every desire. How did a mixed multitude leave them into temptation? They yielded to what? Intense craving. Everything you've tasted, whether tangible or abstract, like emotions or whatever, everything creates a craving in you. And if you don't deal with it, it can stay in your memory bank, your soul. Your soul is your memory bank, right? It can stay in your soul for years. And then something can just trigger it like this. Pray that God removes it. Because you're more than just giving up opposition in church. You're more than just giving up fervency. You're giving up this. You cannot pray for your family for salvation from there. You can only pray from here. And this is not for pastors. and It's for every single one. Jesus said, when that guy sincerely said, remember me in your kingdom. Jesus said today, not we're going to put you through discipleship classes. You must first, he says today because the sincerity. And you know how deep that is. The Bible says Jesus was beaten so badly. He, was, he wasn't recognizable. Now here's someone hanging in the same situation like you, but he could sense with his spirit, man. This is the Christ. There was nothing that you could see. That's why take your eyes off seeing. Focus is not a seeing thing. It's a faith thing. When he looked at Christ with the eyes of the spirit, he says, this is the Christ. How will I say to someone that looks worse than me, remember me when you come in your kingdom? Must be the spirit reveals it. Because when the spirit eyes is open, there's people that we used to disrespect. The spirit eyes like, yo, this is such an anointed person. Father, forgive me. Because we don't see the big cars and stuff. We miss God many times. We miss him. We miss him. But in spiritual, you can sense. Then is a reality. He's come with whatever and he sounds eloquent, but then there's someone that don't look it. You'll come and find someone sweeping the church and there's nothing about and you'll sense this is a man and woman of God and you respect them. And even if they don't have titles, respect them because it's the nature of year to treat everything that looks like God, made in the image of God, with love and respect. Stay focused. Stay in Him and allow Him to keep you. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this with us. I believe this video was a blessing to you as it was for us preparing it and putting it out there for you. Connect with us. The link for our website will be in the description below. Connect with us for any information that you need, for any counseling, for any questions you may have, or just to grow with us and to go this journey forward. More info will be on the website, but when you can come back anytime to this page, 
is to find out more about what God is saying to us in this season as we're sharing it with you. Thank you so much for watching. Tommy Shita signing out. Be blessed.